Hello, my friends, and well, yeah, it's another video with my voice on it, and and well, as you can see, pretty much this is the best representation of how 2019 has been for me. You see, I feel the need to also tip my little um sense into the hat and share my perspectives on how things have been in well this year. I feel since my mom's passing of last year finally things have started to move ahead per se as we speak. And for what it was worth I would say that it has made me into a better and stronger person. I don't think I have actually ever spoken about this in detail per se because well this year has just basically made me busy. Stupidly, stupidly busy as a matter of fact. But for the sake of how everything is, a lot has happened. A lot of changes have been going on. A lot of words have been said. A lot of feelings have been incurred. And a lot of changes have been happening in life, as far as I know. I decided after what happened in 2018 and what's what's been happening in 2019 that um to say in a nutshell I've already grown up stop telling me to be a man I mean this is the message I've been getting for the entirety of this time that I've been having to myself others have been saying well you know you need to be the man of the house. And yet the funny thing is I've already been the man of the house. It's just I've been going through a lot of BS. I've been taking the back seat as the observer because of all things crazy have been going on since. And yet after all this, everything is just wrapping up. And for what it's worth, I think it, it could all be stated as finally, finally everything is starting to make sense. As far as the house is concerned, the people who are living in this house, namely myself and the old man, we came to an understanding that yes I am the only person around here that can do the job of making sure that things stay managed and at the same time I continue doing what I'm doing on here as well as what I'm doing out there What I find funny about this now is that after taking a two week excursion away from California, things have suddenly changed. And for the better it seems. Because now that all this has been going on, well, I can close out certain events in this lifetime that can say, Okay, I'm tired of this. I'm done with it. Let's move on. I also feel that I've grown significantly as a person because I've been doing these little jaunts around the city, going to, say, just to see this old man where he is right now. Even he has changed after the fact that, after everything that has been going on, he's starting to realize 
you cannot act the same way you you went in as soon as you went as soon as you started going in there and the last thing I remember him saying and this was last night was he says he wants to come out a, a better person I can possibly say this I'm glad he decided to actually just say that for someone like him at his age like he's he's damn near 90 he's about 86 87 years old he's been through a lot of shit as well as I've been through a lot of shit because all of the stuff that has been going on throughout this entire excursion of this year it's been coming to a head it has not been kind and of course at the same time that this has been going on he's realizing yeah I need to take responsibility and accountability I've had the most interesting rides this year going up to see him like last night I was um, I, I take Lyft to um, do these long-range trips and one of the drivers interestingly enough was a student in quantum physics and she had an interesting take on life through that and it was so interesting that basically just it was just me and her speaking about this this whole thought process about life and even I said even when I mentioned that I'm I'm I I'm a content creator on YouTube um, I do let's plays and whatnot I didn't disclose the information of who I am to her yet I disclosed the information to who I am to another Lyft driver funny that and I gained a sub out of it all sub out of all that which I find funny because even the guy who who works on my computer he even forwarded that information about my channel to other people he he knows so that in a nutshell has been really really awkward but I, I like the change the thing about me that has been that I think really changed things was when I had to, when I actually spoke at my mom's home going ceremony as, as what they call it I had some thought-provoking things to say about it and even the people who knew me actually never heard me speak so profoundly as I did that day and for what it is worth I could say yeah um, when I have something to say I will say it that's the kind of person I am I don't say everything that goes in my head because like as I mentioned to as I mentioned to the first driver that took me up to um, South Hill I said I'm I'm one of those people that basically you don't want to have me talk I said I'm one of those people who are genuinely and honestly blunt you do not want to hear what I honestly think about the whole situation of the world because there are some people who really can't take it and she and the funny thing is she never heard of the term snowflakes I said the world is full the world has snowflakes you got some people that look at you like you're the most evilest person on earth just because of what you say your perspective of things and therefore that's only their opinion Let me quote a line from Dirty Harry. 
and just point this out. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. And it's true. Everybody has an opinion. I don't really go by opinions. I go by thought process. Believe it or not. I'm one of those people who basically, you know, I like to hang back and watch things as they slowly, gradually open up. It's like in my situation, as a voice actor, it is not easy trying to do Let's Plays and do voice acting at the same time. Because the one thing, excuse me, the one thing I tend to do, and for most people who don't really realize this, is that I can indeed open up. It's just something that I never really opened up about. Especially when it's talking about my career as a voice actor. And at the same time, me doing content on YouTube. And or Twitch. I had this talk um, last night with the guy that um, basically that drove me back home. And I just said, well, you know, just to be honest, it's really not easy to actually do a script sometimes. And I'm, I'm like new, to, I'm new to the professional area of voice acting, but I'm still doing YouTube. The funny thing is, it is not, it is not easy because you're, you're working on muscle memory. And sometimes muscle memory can mess you up because you read a line so many times that it'll basically like it'll basically look like lines are kind of blurred, words are kind of mesh into each other, something to that regard. It is not easy, easy let me tell you. And the funny thing is, to what it's worth. Yeah, it's going to pay off. It will have its dividends. From what I've learned about doing voice acting work, the most important thing you want to get out is the audition. That's more important than trying to trying to get the part. The audition is what they really look for. If you sound a certain way, they'll bring you back. And there was a time that I did, at one point, nail the part for a program. It was an English translation program to and a company somewhere in China was going to pay me for reading, um, you know, a block of text. For a program, and I haven't heard from them since. But um, I'm pretty sure they were busy with something else. Ah, California. <laughs> Not a day goes by when you hear one of those bad boys, and you start thinking, Ah, uh, California. As far as everything else is concerned, my time being back here on YouTube has been pretty good because all I've been doing is just picking up on all the old stuff I had on backlog for like, I don't know, God knows when. Even when I for a time lost permissions to my channel, I still worked on some stuff. Namely, Namely, you know, some PS4 Let's Plays that has been up since I don't know when. And some games, like I said, as far as the progress is concerned, 
I may have to do them online because I do have the Steam versions of certain games in which do not have blocks on them as compared to the PS4 which do have blocks on them only because of quote unquote spoilers. The Yakuza games are one of those types of um, games that do have that. I'm not sure about Judgment coming from coming from that it's from the same studio that made Yakuza. And funny and funnier than that, the title it the title it goes by is the English version of Yakuza. You got Goltaku. Or like a dragon. That that's what you got Goltaku means. For what is worth though. Um, like I said, I got a couple of let's plays I'm I'm still doing, and for the most part that I'm doing them right now, I have a few that I'm just cleaning out because, like I said, I'll be working on a new a new session uh, of the let's plays that are already up there. But um, you know when things aren't that busy I will indeed get to them but things have been really busy as far as restoration is concerned lately what happened was um, my TV my TV behind me it's a, pol it's a Polaroid it's just like Vizio it's an HDMI type it's an HDMI HDTV type but the thing here is um um the video blew out <laughs> and only the sound remains so it just leads me to realize i had to get myself a new tv cuz it it i can't function without a tv especially after hours when i want to watch something like a movie or perhaps you know one of my many DVDs that I have that I haven't been watching because I've been so busy when you're trying to take care of bills and put things to rest as it were the life of a homeowner is very tiresome <laughs> I've watched Forty's video not too long ago, and I can agree with what he said. As far as being a homeowner, it has its drawbacks, and for its, and for what it's worth, time is not entirely on your side as a homeowner. I mean, granted that the Granted that this house is under the old man's name because of spouse and age. Because of my age, the only thing I can do is assist. But at the same time, it shows that, you know, everything is going to be all right because it's left in capable hands. I mean, it is my home that I grew up in and this is still my home after the fact of this whole situation and I am taking care of things while everything else is getting straightened out and for what it's worth I think we can all say I've grown up quite a bit even though people tend to look at me and think that oh I'm I'm young I appreciate that I'm 40 years old of course I'm young. I'm still as young as I can get. I, as young as I can get. I stopped aging at 18. I think the only thing I'm doing right now is shaving my head to make sure I don't have a, I don't have a bird's nest on my head. And people somehow think I look better that way with my with my hair shaved off. Or at least cut down. I agree with that. I do look better. I feel better with this look I mean you guys have seen you guys have seen me without hair before I do look better without that 
or at least with, you know, a small batch of hair instead of, you know, whatever the hell I had previous to that. But, you know, that, that's, you know, that's point of interest, point of view, whatever you like to call it. That's my opinion. But, honestly, to be honest, I do like the fact that I keep my, that I do keep, um, a zero cut, as they call it. You know, that, that, that's the terminology they call it, a zero cut. So, I like doing the zero cut because it does keep my hair straight. And, it, and the way, the way my hair is, it's not really, well, it doesn't look good when it grows out. Because every time when it grows out, like the middle of it, it might be a hereditary thing, that I get a bald spot right in the middle of it. Because I've seen it happen with my parents. So therefore, instead of me worrying about having it grow out, one good scalp massage takes care of everything. Or maybe a few. Depending. So in the world of Let's Plays, moving on to that, I have been working on a PSP Let's Play that I just started this morning. But I will not reveal to reveal the contents of it until January. You would think, oh, hey, I would be doing something for, say, Anime Month, but, um, I am doing that. But it's not, but like I said, what I have planned for Comic and Anime Month, and that is like, way, 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 not so way off in the future. I still have not managed to do number 100 on the chest of obscurity and we're closing down to that by the way i have a few ideas of what i want to do for episode 100 but it hasn't really come to me yet maybe a psp game maybe something that i have been playing prior to everything else that i have been putting my little grubby hands on because well on ps4 i have been busy and speaking of PS4, I have indeed joined the ranks of Final Fantasy XIV. It is one of those ideal MMOs that basically does work out and the money is worth it. At least for what I think it feels like it, it's worth it. For how it works for me, the only way it would work for me is um, PS4 because... Uh, as old as my computer is, I'd rather just keep it as it is, unless I, unless if I do up uh, a full-blown gaming PC, and I would have to transfer everything from PS4 to PC. But that's not here and there, because um, I haven't done it yet, and I don't think I am going to do it for quite some time. Not until, like I said, I have a full-blown gaming PC. That's the next. That's the next step in 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 all this. I have a gaming PC, just so I can have access to all the games I have on Steam. They work properly. I can record off them, and in the sense, more content for you guys, whether it be on stream or on YouTube. I have to look at it like this. The bright side is, as far as everything else, I have to look at the bright side. It only makes sense to look at the bright side. In, in everything that I tend to do, there are times I have to just put on the gloves, start slapping people around. Just like Captain Bright on, on the Gundam series. 
like, it's what I put on my Twitter is like, yeah, I'm Captain Bright. I said, yeah, I'm the guy who basically has to sometimes put the glove on and just. I had to do that sometimes. Because, really, one good slap kind of makes sense. And, of course, if, if you ever watch Gundam, especially the UC, the UC timeline, you knew that Captain Bright ran a ship. And he took no fucks for anyone. And the only thing he had to do was slap one person. And it's usually the main protagonist that needed that one slap. Just to, just to say, you got a job to do, bitch. You better start doing it. <laughs> I will say that to some people. That, you know, you have a job to do. So you best do it. Unless you want to get slapped. And that one slap is probably that one thing that probably makes sense. Because that will probably jar them back to reality. In that sense, it does make sense. Because, <laughs> hey, one good slap deserves another. So, another thing, <clears throat> another thing I'm doing as a sense of, um, well, I guess I could say I'm doing my own re reinventing. One, I, one thing I have been doing lately, besides taking care of things around the house and, and whatnot, is that um, I'm going back to reading. And the one thing I was reading on my trip, while in between, you know, the the layovers, is The Record of Lotus War by Ryo Mizuno. So, for what it's worth that I did do that. I feel I might go back into working on my working on my books. It has been some time, but my books are still around, and all it needs is just one good word of mouth. That's all. It just needs one good word of mouth, and well, my my job as an author will start really taking off. Because if nobody knows who you are, how do you know that your product exists if you don't say who you are? And that's another thing why I'm opening myself up to people that are interested in to knowing who I am and what I do. So... It's a good thing because, well, it, it really is. Not many people know who I am. Outside of YouTube, I'll, I'll say it like this. Outside of YouTube, not many people know who I am. Unless if I say, oh, hey, I'm a Let's Player on YouTube. They never heard of Let's Players. They never, they have they don't know what a Let's Player is. So it's interesting to share that because how many people how many people actually do say, Oh, hey, I'm a I'm a Let's Player on YouTube. I provide commentary to some video games. Sometimes I be part of the story. Other times I'm not a part of the story. And I look at it like that. Sometimes I play the part. Sometimes I'm not playing the part. I'm looking from the outside in. Sometimes when the story tells itself, only, done, only, only thing I can do is sidebar commentary. Otherwise, somebody needs to read the story. Somebody needs to be a part of the story. Most people 
kind of see that some others don't. But what I do, and these are for people who who are curious, what I do on my channel, I cover a lot of older titles. And yes, even on on the even on the emulators I have, they're new to me because you know I may know about it, but I have not had it in my inventory. Like I have a couple of PSP games. Most of them I have not even heard of. And some I got English patch because I'm just freaking curious. I've never played this game. And even if I played this game, I never played this version of it. And there are some games that I didn't even know exist. So it's it's something brand new to me. And I feel I feel that sometimes, you know, there's some people who do let's plays that they just do cut and you know like they do the cut copy paste thing there's some people who just basically want to skim through a story and they want to tell their own their own point of point of view about the game and how to do this and how to do that and that's respectable in every way I know I know friends that do that. Forty is one of my friends who actually does that to to some of his games that he do on his channel. And that's okay. You know, that's the way he works, that's the way that's the way he operates and I respect that. At least it's showing yeah, I have some knowledge about this game. This is how you're supposed to play it. But let me share my thoughts about it while I'm playing it, just so you guys get to understand my point of view. Me, I am who I am. I'm a, I'm a bookworm by nature. I like to be part of the story. I like to be in the story. And even, even when I'm doing voices, when I'm reading scripts, per se, I like to feel what I'm reading. I like to at least get a gist of what I'm what I'm doing as far as being a voice actor is concerned or if I'm reading a script for a commercial or something like that because like I said, I got from what I get sometimes I sometimes get five or six types of um assignments and sometimes they take at least two to three days to do but as long as i get as long as i get whatever little time i can spare to do them and send them back out just so the agency i work for has them that's the main thing that's what i've learned as long as you get the parts out as long as you get the sides as they call them as long as you get whatever it is that they're offering you out there, that's the only thing you have to worry about. Anything else, it has nothing to do with you. You just do your part, and whatever happens past that, you're okay. I mean, you may get paid, you may not get paid, but you're gonna get you're going to get something out of it. So me being my first year doing professional work as a voice actor, I can only say one thing. It is what it is. I can only do my best and give my best. From then on, it's just basically, if they want me, they know where they can find me. As far as YouTube's concerned, it's the same thing. YouTube, we can only say is, um, eh, that's all, that's all I can really say, meh, it, it is what it is, 
And, um, <laughs> like, you can worry about every little thing that happens on YouTube. No, not really. There's some people who are, throughout this whole thing with Copa, they are worried about their channel, and they shouldn't be. Because if it's about, because if it's about, say, money, I'm hardly ever seeing the money I, I'm making from the videos I, I make. And when I was partnered with, um, with other, uh, channels and stations, per se, I did get paid. And, I, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to knock that because, oh, hey, you're still here? You're still getting paid? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm still getting paid. Whatever bits you can throw at me, I'll take them. I'm not, I'm not that proud. I mean, as long as I get something in my pocket, hey, I'm glad. I, I, I'm glad I'm working towards something. And even those who look down at me, they have to respect what I got, respect what I'm doing. Because there are people out there who would look down at me, not to name names, but there are people out there who will look down at people like us. Because it's not a, it's not a well-paying job. But I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And the one thing I've, and the one thing I am noticing about this whole year, while reinventing myself, is the little things in between the other stuff that I'm doing, that I find time in doing. I'm learning. Or actually relearning to enjoy the little things more than the big things even in even in my let's plays I'm finding humor in some of the lines and some of the lines I have to say I look at it like you look at it in this aspect like I So, it does make sense. I mean, in this lifetime, you gotta find, you gotta find a little humor. Because, really, <sighs> only God knows what, he, what was in his mind when he made us. And only in the universe will we define comedy as, well, a strange thing and comedy is a strange thing but that will be a story for another time so until next time whatever the hell I'm doing whether it's on here or on PS4 I've been your friendly neighborhood Tenkaichi and I have spoken, and I am out. And if I don't see you around for the holidays, may you have a blessed and happy, a blessed and happy one. And may you all have a prosperous new year in the year of 20 double X.